Hey guys, Saint here, and we'll be doing the patch 5.5 rundown. So let's get into it. All right, we got Bard not releasing him on this patch, so I'm not really gonna go or not uh, on the initial release of the patch. So I'm not really gonna go over him too much. But he looks like just from the PBE that he's gonna be probably a pretty high skill cap champion and gonna provide a lot of unique things to the game. But anyway, let's skip over him. All right, they got a Zier. Base attack speed has been increased to 0.625. Again, soldier attack range is 375, which is still lower than it was before the nerf. And then spear pass through range is 50, total range unchanged. Hmm. I feel like the meta is kind of shifting away from the Zero style champions. Uh, these buffs are going to help them a little bit. But with a lot of the champions that are popular right now, like assassins are coming back really hard. LeBlanc and Zed are, are definitely really popular picks right now in the meta. Uh, I don't really see a Zier coming back into the LCS as much as he once was. I'm sure people will randomly try to play him as a counter pick to some things, but I'm not sure that he'll be a top tier pick at all. Uh, gang playing. Fix the bug where slow immune targets were also unaffected by the dot. The only people I only play gang playing support, so whatever. <laughs> Who cares about that? Uh, Gragas, they increased his mana to 400, and now the W Drunken Rage damage catch versus monsters is now 300. Um. This is to help Gragas' jungling, but I don't really think that Gragas is, like, a top, top tier jungler. He might be uh, situationally okay. I have to see how the, the Cinder Hulk feels on him. Channel. But, uh, let me mute this Microphone real quick. Muted. Muted. I have to see how the Cinder Hulk feels on him uh, and how he feels as a full tank build. Because I don't think you're going to be able to build him AP if you jungle him. Um, if the Cinder Hulk allows him to clear the jungle fast enough, I think he'll be okay. But if it doesn't, then he'll probably still be about the same champion he is now. Uh, Karma fixed the bug where allied champions were granted the inspired portion of the shield instead of half the defiance damage. I don't even play Karma. Well, I like know about her, but nobody plays Karma. Who cares? Fixed the bug where enemy champions could sometimes dash through cards as well pain without being slowed. Well, I'm pretty sure Zhao Zhao will be happy about that. Um, I've experienced this bug sometimes, but it's not too big a deal. Big a deal. Like sometimes like an Ari or somebody will like dash through your your wall and they won't get slowed, but. Half the time you're fucking dead anyways if that happens, so not that big. Uh, Kassadin, they gutted him last patch, and now they're kind of buffing him up a little bit again. Uh, they're giving his Rift Walk a two-second cooldown at max rank, which is going to be ridiculous. He'll have almost a one-second cooldown Rift Walk if you have some CDR, and it is a 500 range Rift Walk. I think Kassadin will be sometimes an okay pick. I just don't think you could pick him blind like you did before. Where you're just like, ha, I got Kassadin. Like, I automatically win. You're going to have to be really careful about the matchups you pick him into, I think, just because the Rift Walk range is so short. Um, but I think he might see some play again, uh, especially because the mana cost on the Rift Walk is also lowered. So uh, I think people are going to maybe go more towards the, Bru the Bruiser Kassadin build again, like going back towards Roa and things like that. Um... But we'll see. Like, I'm not too big of a Kassadin player, but uh, I think the range is still... Yeah, what is it, like 200 less than it was before? It's still pretty big, but I think it'll be all right. Uh, Lissandra, a lot of people consider her really OP, so they gave her some minor nerfs. They lowered the base damage at level 1 by 5 on Ice Shards, and then at max level, they reduced it by 25. This is going to hurt her wave clear a little bit, as well as her damage rotation on her combos, but... I still think Lissandra will be playable just for the fact that she has so much CC and she has such a strong early and mid game before people get QSSs. Um, I see in a lot of the other regions, people are starting to not pick her as much because uh, people will just like purposely not team fight until uh, they get Mikhail's Crucible or QSS or something like that. And they'll play really pussy around Lissandra and then they'll just win the late game because Lissandra can't lock people down. Um, I, I think she'll still be played though, just maybe not super first pick worthy like as she was before like a lot of teams like they see Lissandra they instantly rotate her so I'm not sure that'll be the case anymore uh Nautilus these are the changes that really interest me the Nautilus changes they shifted a lot of the damage off of the W um at earlier ranks like it's pretty weak it's uh 30 damage at level one and 40 damage at level two uh, and then also on top of that, the ratio on the shield, uh, it still goes up with levels. It's a little bit stronger in the early. So I think what people are going to do is they're going to probably put like two or three points in the W, and then they're just going to start maxing E. Uh, just because getting the W damage increased from 40 to like 70, like that's not that's not that big a deal, or 50 to 70. You only get 10 more damage per an auto uh, per each point in the W. 
which I don't think is honestly that big a deal. All that really matters is that you have the shield strong enough to where it can actually absorb a couple hits, so you actually keep hitting with the W uh, on the minions. So I think you need like level 2 or 3 W to do that. And I think what people are going to do is they're going to max out the E uh, right when they get the 2 or 3 points on the W, and they're going to try to get that as high as possible, uh, mainly because the CDR on the E just gets so ridiculous, and then also has a decent base damage. I actually have to look that up real quick. One second. Uh, let's see. Law wiki. Law wiki Nautilus. All right, we, we got Nautilus here. So Nautilus' is E does 220 damage. Um... And you have to remember, people were not maxing this out before, so you're used to like the 60 damage E. If you have E maxed out, it's 220 damage, and you have a 5 second cooldown on that, which also gets affected, you know, by CDR. So you have it about almost a 2.5 second cooldown on your E uh, with max CDR, which is going to be pretty brutal. The slow may only be 1.5 seconds, but just the fact that you're going to be pumping out 220 AoE damage every 2 point whatever seconds, like that's going to make you a real force to be reckoned with. And to put that into perspective, Lissandra used to be like not played as much and considered not viable and you know what the change that made her really viable and really top tier OP was? It's lowering the Q cooldown to being in that window where it has like a 2 second or, and or sub cooldown. Uh, if you have an ability that you can just spam over and over and over again and you have mana to back it up, um, as long as the, the ability has like a, a decent damage range, like look right here, 250 damage is what Lissandra does. So you have 220 base damage on the E and you're just going to be spamming it. Um, I think it's gonna be really good. Like, there's no AP ratio on it anymore. Who, but who gives a shit? Like, who builds AP on Nautilus anyways? Like, maybe you can squeeze like a Leandris or an Abyssal in there somewhere. But I think full tank Nautilus is gonna be the way to go. Uh, so I think Nautilus is gonna be pretty damn strong, especially if the Cinder Hulk is uh, really good. And you have to remember the Cinder Hulk also uh, gives you. It's based off of like uh, the bonus is now like 25% of your bonus health or something like that, which scales really well with his shield since his shield's 17% uh, max health. So people are just gonna stack a ton of health on Nautilus and then get CDR. And I think that's definitely going to be the way to go on him. So all in all, I think Nautilus will be decently strong. He'll still be kind of weak in the early game like he's always been. But I think if you can get him out of the early game, he'll be he'll be a decent pick. Um, they nerfed Nidalee's W to no longer do percent of current health, which is really good since 18% of a 2,000 to 3,000 health target is a lot less than 200 damage. So good. Nerf Nidalee. I don't care. This champion is... Like, she's fun to play, but she feels abusive. Um, yeah, she just feels like she doesn't belong in the game right now, so I'm glad they're nerfing her. Uh, Rek'Sai now uses the ward spawning UI to show the number of existing tunnels versus the maximum, as well as displaying which tunnels will be destroyed once you reach the limit. That's pretty handy. Rek'Sai is still broken, though. Uh, Shivana, the bonus damage against marked targets is now 2.5% maximum health. Brit auto instead of 2%. whoop de doo da Shivana is still a piece of shit. Never going to be played. <coughs> Singe fixed several cases where flinging enemy to make adhesives would not immediately root them. Uh, not really many people play Singe anyway, so that's not that big a deal. These Scion changes are actually pretty big. They lowered the mana cost on Decimating Smash at rank 1 uh, to all ranks, and then they increased the AD ratio on it. Uh, and then they made the Roar of the Slayer cost more mana as you put points into it. And if anybody plays Scion, they know that maxing E out and then just spamming the living shit out of them with the E since it costs only 35 mana for almost 300 to 400 damage uh, if you hit it off the minion is pretty fucking broken. So I think what people are going to do is they're going to put three points into E and then they'll maybe even max out the W or the Q uh, and they won't put the point like more points into the E. Um, I think only increasing the E by 10 mana since you only have like two or three points into it just to get out of the lane phase and have good wave clear and then max the Q or the W second will be really good. Uh, this will hurt Scion's laning a little bit, but I still think he'll be a pretty big lane bully just because he's so damn hard to kill and he has so much uh, survivability. And on top of that, he has like an immense amount of CC, so if the jungler ever comes top, you just like lock them down and kill them. So I think Scion will still be played, um, but this will nerf his laning a little bit. Skarner, the two damage increase on the Q. Oh, baby, that's going to be the big the big ticket difference that's what's going to set them apart then now if you put points in the e it almost becomes a real spell 180 damage as opposed to 120 not buying it dude scarner is still like like two damage come on man like it's way too low like you, you gotta buff him in other ways than this like he definitely needs more buffs than this 
maybe full tank Skarner with the Cinder Hulk would be really good. But these numbers in general are just like really weak. You'll do almost no damage late game. Uh, but you will provide a ton of CC. Like Skarner's always been really annoying because he forces your team to get a QSS. So maybe people will play him. I'm not sure. It all depends on the Cinder Hulk here. But these buffs are just like they're like a joke. Uh, Sona no longer consumed power cord on hitting blue train or close to Sentinels. Will be uh, Crescendo now costs 100 mana at all ranks. That's honestly not that big deal. They cut the mana cost down by. Um, you know, it's like 50% of it was, what it was before in max rank. That's honestly not that big. Uh, Star Call, don't care. Soraka, nobody plays her anymore. And she's. This is just a bug fix. Tristana, rapid fire. Each basic attack against a target with explosive charge reduces the cooldown of rapid fire by one. It's going to be a nice little mini buff to Tristana to keep her sustained damage up since they, I think, lowered the duration of rapid fire from what it was before. And maybe this will make her a little bit better in the, in the late game uh, if you really need that sustained damage. Trundle, passive, King's Tribute. The range is 1,400 now as opposed to 1,000. It's not that big. Healing Amplification is now 20% at all ranks as opposed to 8. But this is like a nice buff, but you have to remember that you have to have your W activated in order to get this. So you still going to have some mana issues with, with Trundle. I don't know. I don't, I'm just not sure where he would fit into the game right now. He's like not that good of a jungler. And he's not really that good against a lot of the top lane matchups that people are playing. Like he's not good against Malachi. He's not good against Rumble. He's not good against Kennen. He's not good against Lissandra. He's like just not good against anything. So you can buff him all you want. But unless like he gets like real kind of reworks on his kit. He's just not going to fit into the meta right now. Uh, Urgot. <laughs> the Terra Capacitor. So now the W, all right. This is what the big thing that Urgot players for this is. This is actually a really, 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 really massive buff for Urgot, and that's because people get one point in W on Urgot. They max the Q and then the E second. So before, if you just had the one point in the W, you'd have an 80 shield, and that's it. Like that's all you get for Urgot. You're like, hey, 80 shield. That's nice, I guess. Now you get 80 shield for every thousand mana you have on top of the 60. So most Urgots around mid and late game are walking around with two or three thousand mana. So just from having that one point, I'd say realistically you're still going to have one point in the W when you have 2,000 mana with Urgot. So now that 80 shield that you had is now 160 plus 60. So now you have a 220 shield, which is what the rank 4 of the shield was before. Um, this is going to make Urgot just way tankier overall, especially since you have CDR built into Urgot already because like, you're getting the, the Frozen Heart and, and the, the Brutalizer and all these kind of things. You just can spam shield and you just be fucking impossible to kill. So really big buffs to Urgot. And then they also lowered the cooldown of the ultimate. Uh, not that big a deal. But the W change is pretty massive. We'll see how Urgot is. Maybe even people will start playing it in lane. Who knows. Um, <coughs> Piercing arrow now begins its cooldown at the charge state rather than when the arrow fires. Wow, you can spam people with arrows now on Varus. This is actually a s nice little buff. But... Varus still has the problems where he just gets run over late game by dive comps and he does not have that much range and yeah if you're against like a Thresh or a Leon and you have to blow your flash and you have to go back to lane you're just dead to rights if the jungler ever comes so he has that issue he's not a very uh he has a lot of problems with mobility I mean granted there are the AD carries that are played that have mobility problems but they have some way of like getting out of stuff like Varus's E is not a very good disengage and Varus's ultimate used for disengage is still like not that reliable so we'll see. Varus might see play though. I like. I've always liked playing Varus. He's fun. We'll, we'll see. Uh, the Vigar, his Q now travels faster. Whoopee. But this is this is actually a pretty decent change. Delay before walls appears. 0.5 seconds, uh, as opposed to 0.75. I thought 0.75 was too long, and it also the warning particle shows on cast instead of after cast. Um, I think you'll have a little bit easier time catching people with Vigar stun, but. Uh, I don't think that he's going to be played support or anything like that. Maybe. Uh, I'm sure somebody will try to make it work. But we might see him again. But he still needs more tweaking, I feel like. Uh, Vi, they nerfed Assault and Battery's damage by 50 at rank 1 and 25 rank 2. And it's the same at max rank. So Vi's level 6 tank is going to be a little bit weaker. So he can't start, or she can't start snowballing as hard early. I still think you'll have more than enough damage to kill somebody. Because most of your damage comes from your Q and your, your W proc. Um... And then they also lowered Vi's base movement speed down to 345. Vi will still be played. 
Uh, but I think if some of the tank junglers start coming into play that are like really good at cock blocking Vi and like counter counter engaging on people, Vi will start to fall out of favor. <coughs> Fixed a bug where the detonation on upgraded death ray was canceling Victor's auto attacks. Your auto attacks don't do that much damage like him anyways, but hooray. Hooray to all the Victor players. It was actually a pretty big buff. Uh, I don't pe don't think people realize how big of a buff this is to Volibear since he's actually going to have Cinder Hulk. Volibear's big problem before in the jungle was he sucked ass at clearing the jungle. So you just end up getting out farmed on Volibear and then you weren't tanky enough to like really scrap it out and be a tank line. Um, yeah, you couldn't kill the big targets that well and then you couldn't kill the little targets that well either since like your AoE is just like your E max and it's still not that much. And you have to pump a lot of mana. So now uh, you can actually max out your W when you're clearing with Volibear, and then you can uh, you can just like chunk out the big camps, and then the Cinder Hulk in the meantime will be killing the little ca little camps like the little Raptors and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so you can use your W to kill big targets, and then since it'll uh, half the cooldown, you can just spam the W over and over again as an actual move rather than an execute, um, and you'll be able to like clear the jungle a lot faster. So I think if the Cinder Hulk is strong enough for clearing, I think Volibear will definitely see some play. And he'll be more of a peel instead of an initiate. Um, I don't think Volibear as an initiate is very good all that altogether, just because he has to like run straight at you. He has like the sing singe effect where he has to run straight at you and he can get kited around and just get beat up. But I think Volibear is a really good bruiser type champion, and he can definitely peel very well, and he can kill tanks very well uh, also. Uh, let's see, we have Battle Cry now is the base heal is increased by a little bit. It's not that big. Uh, Audacious Charge though got buffed on damage to 230. This is like a little bit closer to what it was before they nerfed it that last time. Um, I think this will help Zen out a little bit, but Zen still has the same problem where he has to go in and that's his only play. Uh, and he has no escape and he's actually like not crazy tanky without his ultimate on. And even if his ultimate's on, he's still not that crazy tanky. So uh, I think Maybe in lower elo, Zen will start to see a little bit more play, but I think it's from high-end competitive play. I don't think that he'll see any play at all. Um, <clears throat> all right, Zach. Zach is another champion that I feel really hinges on how strong the Cinder Hulk is for your clears and how strong it is in team fights and all that kind of stuff. I think uh, doubling the Elastic Slain Shot's knockback duration is really big. Like a full one-second knockback is really strong especially since uh how like much the ultimate knocks up as well like you have so many like knockups on on zach now you can just be a massive cc train and then get the cinder hulk and just like run around the team and like slowly whittle them down and burn them down uh you pick up a chunk now briefly gives zach a reservoir of cdr even if he casts w within the one second following a pickup of chunk reservoir of cdr i have to see how that feels but I thought Zach was already decent at clearing the jungle with the W change, and if this speeds it up anymore, and then he has Cinder Hulk, I think Zach will be a real powerhouse when it comes to farming and then just like forcing team fights. So, I think Zach might show up. We'll have to see though. Um, <coughs> Zillion, they lowered the cooldown on his time bomb, so you can actually like lane and if not get shit on if you miss a Q, uh, and you can actually trade a little bit more effectively and not have to use your W every time to trade. So. Maybe Zillion will be a little bit better. I still think he needs more buffs, but I think they're heading in the right direction. I think, and I really like Zillion's kit, and I think, uh, I think it's gonna be good overall once they get the numbers right. But he still needs a little bit more buffs. Um, Luden's Echo. This is a new, needlessly large rod type item, and I think people are gonna build it on probably like TF. Uh, these Kaidi type champions that have to move around a lot and can like burst you, and or maybe even champions that need like a little bit of wave clear. It's still like, I want to be sitting on needlessly a large rod and it's 3,100 gold and I have the option between getting hourglass or getting death, you know, or like death cap or this item. I think in a lot of scenarios, I'm just going to get the death cap with the hourglass. Like maybe this will uh, sometimes be used, but I think it's really situational. Like maybe like on TF or something, but uh, I don't know. I'm not... Uh, even like they say like bursty train like a Kali or like these other chain like you read in here like a Kali can get this like nah man I want an hourglass on a Kali like hourglass is just too damn good of an item to like pass up if I have needlessly large rod. Uh, sweeping lens now has 75 second cooldown as opposed to 60. That's good because the tier two sweeping lens is just really good at vision denying and choking people off right now, and I think vision control is a little bit too strong right now. So it's good that they nerfed that. And then this is, of course, the big jungle change item, the Cinder Hulk, or the Bombie Cinder. 
Uh, it basically just gives you a mini Sunfire aura uh, while you're jungling, and it also works on uh, champions as well. It gives you 300 health for 1,000 gold, so that's like okay if you can like consider that like a giant spell is like, what, 340 or something like that, or 320. So that's like okay for just 1,000 health. And then it gives you the Immolation Aura, uh, which deals 5 damage plus 1 for a champion level to nearby enemies and 50% bonus damage to minions and monsters. So it's mainly used as a clearing tool, and it also is going to give you a little bit of extra damage to just scrap it out with people, since tanks don't really do that much damage anyways. So, And then they have the Cinder Hulk Enchantment. It gives 350 health, so upgrading it. Uh, you remember the original cost is 1,000 thousand gold. Upgrading it for the 2,200 gold, you're going to spend an extra 1,200 gold. You get 50 extra health. But this is the big thing, you get 25% more bonus health, which is really nice if, since you're stacking health anyways on a tank. And then it also, the emulation aura gets a lot stronger as well. It does 16 plus 1 per champion level magic damage to nearby enemies. Uh, and then of course, it, this increases with time and combat up to 24 plus 1.5 per champion level. So I think that'll be decently strong. It's going to be a little bit stronger than Sunfire is um, in a long term team fight. So I think on the really, really tanky, like, bruiser-type champions like Nunu and Nautilus and Sejuani, all those type of champions that can stay alive for a long time in a team fight, and you're fighting against people who don't really have that much magic resist, I think this item will do absolutely massive damage in the early and mid-game. Uh, but I think once people start to get their QSSs and the team has a locket, I don't think you're going to do that much damage with this. Like, you have to remember that most tank jungles don't really build a lot of magic pen like I'm sure somebody can like slip it in somewhere but uh, once people have a little bit of magic resist this will be pretty much irrelevant but it will help you clear the jungle pretty fast which is one of the problems that tank junglers have so I really like this item and I think it's really well designed and it's gonna be good Sunfire Cape oh and also this item does not stack with Sunfire Cape by the way uh, so Sunfire Cape pretty much the same thing builds out a bomby cinder now though and that's it. Just has a different build path. So I'm, I don't know. I'd actually rather get the Cinder Hulk enchantment, but of course you can't build this on laners since you don't have smite. You can't build jungle items. Uh, Raptor's Cloak. It now gives 40 armor. I've actually never seen anybody buy this game, or this item ever in my entire life, ever. So who gives a shit? <laughs> All right, ZZ Portal now gives 60 armor and 60 magic resist. Those are some pretty decent tank stats, but. Is the portal even that good? Like, for the amount of money I could buy the portal with, I could just buy better items that are, like, much more efficient for combat. So, not sure I'm going to buy this at all. Uh, Point Runner, you now gain the movement speed. Well, and nobody buys Omrecker either. Who gives a shit about this? This is actually a pretty big buff, the Righteous Glory buff. Uh, a lot of people are starting to build this on, like, Annie. And, like, of course, it's a really popular build of Maokai right now to get, like, a the uh, the catalyst and then just sit on it and then start to get like a specter's cow and like a maybe like a warden's mail or whatever you know whatever you need uh, as far as tank stats and then you can slip in the righteous glory right after that and since it gives an extra 150 bonus health that just like makes maokai even stronger so i think this is actually a really huge buff to maokai since his uh build path is starting to go towards that as well <coughs> hmm. banner command unchanged you want to talk about banner command man Seems to actually be pretty healthy state. Wait, I love Banner Command. Don't change it. This is one of my favorite items. All right, Inhibitor Turrets. Global Team Gold on Inhibitor Turrets is now 50, as opposed to 175. Global Team Experience on Inhibitor Laser Turrets is now zero. Well, I guess... Uh, I mean, it's true. If you're pushing in a base and you get the Inhibitor Turrets down, you're pretty much like putting the nail in the coffin. It just gives you too much of an advantage, so I can see that, where it like doesn't give you that much of an advantage after getting them. So that's okay, I guess. Uh, Nexus turrets. Wait, this is inhibitor turrets. So. I thought this was Nexus turrets. So Nexus turrets now give 50. They gave it the exact same treatment. I don't agree with this, actually. I think inhibitor turrets should give the same gold and XP it was before, but I think that what they're doing with the Nexus turrets is okay. They need. It's fine to like make Nexus turrets not give much, but I think inhibitor turrets is like pushing a little bit far because sometimes you're putting the option where you can either choose, you can trade an inhibitor turret and like for another objective, and just because the inhibitor turret also gives a decent amount of gold, uh, the inhibitor turret is generally the right call to make. But this is going to actually make that call a little bit harder to make, so we'll see. Um, shield, turrets, inner turrets. These shields save people so much, I swear to God. 
Get poke. Middle lane, inner turret no longer shields nearby champions. Oh my lord. Top and bottom lane turret shield health is now 30. Wait. That's so weak. Inner turret health is now 2300 though. Oh boy. Whatever. This is good. I like this change. I've seen people get saved by that fucking mid turret so many fucking times. Like saved from Karth Assault, saved from Ignite, saved by like the most random bullshit. Like, fuck this shield. It's too random. Minion health. Caster minion's health increased by 3 by 9 minutes and now an additional 3 every 90 seconds. Hmm. So basically, they buffed up all the minions. This is going to make it harder to wave clear. Especially with Baron. Hmm. Outer and inner turrets uh, deal 3 damage per minion upgrade at 10.5 minutes. Oh, so the outer and inner turrets actually get upgraded as well. So the turrets will be able to clear the minions a little bit faster. And they'll be a little bit harder to dive since they do more damage. Um, but I think that... I think it will be a little bit more annoying to, to wave clear late game. If you have minions that are stacked with too much health and you're trying to wave clear like a Xerif, it's going to be really hard uh, if they get too much health. So... Hmm... Okay, I have to see how this affects the game. Like, this is not that much health, since it's um, only every 90 seconds that they get this extra 6 or 3 health, so it's not too big a deal. I don't think that's going to change too much. Uh, jungle camps. The Gromp now does 7 less damage. I've died to the Gromp so many fucking times, it's disgusting. So, God bless. Large Raptor damage now only does 45, and small Raptor damage only 16. Everybody knows how strong those fucking raptors are, so I'm glad they nerfed them too. So it's going to make raptors a little bit more of a viable route. And then they buffed the big wolf and the small wolf to give even more gold. So this is just like minor buffs to jungle overall. You're going to be a little bit healthier on your clear, and you're going to have a tiny bit more gold. So not too big a deal though, but I'll take any buff I can get in the jungle. Gromp buff now does 10 plus 10% of bonus health. Mm, so your average bonus health in a mid and late game tank is like a thousand to fifteen hundred. So that's honestly like not great. Well, I mean, a hundred to hundred fifty damage is actually a lot. What am I talking about? Wait, that's actually gonna be ridiculous. Wait, tanks are just gonna do a fuck ton of damage with the Gromp buff instead of smiting the damn ra the the Raptor camp. I'm gonna be smiting the the Gromp buff just to scrap it out people with to the death. Um, what was it before? Is eight times level, so at t level ten, that's eighty. Wait, never mind. The, the fucking Gromp buff's like not even that good. I lied. I lied to you, folks. It's like actually not that big of a buff, because before it did like hundred and fifty damage. You would need uh, so much bonus health to really even that out. It'd be disgusting. In the early games, it'll probably be stronger, but in the late games, like in the mid games, it's not gonna be that big a deal until you have like two thousand bonus health. And who the hell gets two thousand bonus health? Like that's so many items. So, sorry to burst your bubble, folks. It's actually not that good. Uh, Rift Scholar speed boost. The Rift Scholar speed try to now affects pets. Oh, baby. Count buffs, not kills. Also glows when the team hits five. Very exciting. Okay, that's for spectator. Uh, end of summoners with beta, visual rebounds, victory defeat banners. Well, that looks like the end of the patch note rundown. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.